we're going to learn all about old Joe Clark. I'm going to teach you the structure of the song. I'm going to teach you the basic melody, get it in your head so that you can begin to improvise on it. I will give you a basic version. We'll pull up some tabs and I'll show you a basic solo, a way that I like to interpret that melody without getting too tough. And then we'll have a slow play version as well. If you want the tabs to this and jam track MP3s that you can play along with, those are over on the website, banjobandclark.com. I'd be honored to have you on board. And if you like videos like this, banjo, mandolin, and guitar, then you'll want to subscribe and click the little bell notification because I put these out all the time. This song is in the key of A, technically. So when you play this song with mandolins and fiddle players, they're going to want to play it in the key of A and use all their open strings. But on banjo and guitar, what we're going to do is we're going to play it out of a G position. And then we're going to capo up to the second fret so that whenever we play stuff out of G, it's really out of A. Whenever we play something in the, over a D chord, it's really an E chord. And so it's important that we think about, uh, think about it like that. Whenever you download the tabs from the site, it's going to have the chords that you're actually making. So it'll say G and D, but really, because you're capoed up, that's an A and an E. Does that make sense? Okay, let's look at the song form here. It's going to have an A part and a B part, just like you would have um, in most fiddle tunes. And each one of those A and B parts are going to be eight bars each, and then we'll repeat them. All right, so for our A part, we're going to have, I'll draw it in red here. We'll have a measure of G, 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 D. And then another G, G. Then we'll have a split measure where half of the measure is G, half of it's D, and then back to a measure G. And again, we'll repeat that. When we go to the B part, it's going to look similar, but we're going to have a new chord come in. We're going to have three bars of G, and then we're going to have a measure of F. That's that dominant seventh. Then the second line of the B part, the last four bars, looks exactly like the last four bars of the A part. Okay, so we got some uh, familiarity happening there. Okay, now remember, we repeat that. So to play the A part, a part, it's a total of 16 bars. Then we'll go into the B part for a total of 16 bars. I like to think about this in terms of numbers too. So if you're like me and you like to think about that, because technically we are in the key of A, numbers help us keep that separate. It'd be 1115, 11151, repeat for the B part, 1117, 11. One five split one. We repeat that. Okay. So beyond that, we're also going to have some potatoes, and that's to help us kick off the song. And then we're going to have an ending, just a standard four bar ending. Let's take a look at the tab here, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Here we have some potatoes. This is just four measures of us establishing what the tempo is going to be and showing people how they can come in. If you don't know how to play potatoes, I have a whole lesson on that. And then we'll dive into the first A part, which, as I mentioned, is going to be eight bars long. Then we're going to play a second A part. So it's like we're repeating it, and that will be eight bars. Then we'll go into the B part. That's going to be eight bars. It has that F chord there. And then we have a second B part, another eight bars. And then we're going to have our ending. That's a four-bar ending, and that's that standard shave and a haircut type ending that we're used to hearing. Now, let me put the iPad down, and I want to talk briefly about what the melody does, and because that's the most important thing. And then we'll look at a version of how to play that melody and pull out the tab. Let's start by using our ears, then we'll get into the tab. But first, we need to learn what the melody of this song is all about, because you're going to eventually play all kinds of versions of this song. And I don't want you to be stuck to a certain version on, on tab. Go ahead and tune your banjo up and then throw a capo on at the second fret. Also, you'll want to spike your fifth fret or tune it up to an A note. I'll wait while you get tuned. Okay, I assume that you're tuned now. Let's think about what the melody does. It starts out on the first string and I want you to just try to copy after me. So I started out with an open string. 
Went to second fret, third fret, back down. First fret on the second string. Now the second little phrase of the melody is very similar. And that's it. Now we play it again. And then to end the A part, it's just a simple step down. Like three blind mice. So I want you to use your ears to try to pick out that melody and see if you can play along with me. Here we go. Okay. Now when we get to the B part, there's a little difference. Uh, we will see if some things are in common though. It's going to start out on your third string. And then it's going to do the three blind mice. Now we're going to play a note down there that we're not used to playing, although we've already played it before an octave higher. That's an F note. That gives it that really bluesy sound. So what have I played so far for the B part? Start out with the third string. See if you can play the whole B part with me. Here we go. Now there's going to be a thousand different ways that we can play those melody notes. I have a version here. I also have an advanced version on the side where we get into melodics and all that stuff. But it's important that you get that melody installed in your brain and in your heart so that we can keep coming back to it. I'm going to play all the way through an A part and a B part a little quicker. You just listen to it. And even if you can't play along, see if your ears expect me to play what I play. Let's repeat that A. Now the B parts. Another B part. to say that you're ready to start learning a song whenever you can hum it by yourself boom, 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 and go all the way through the, the song then you're ready to really start internalizing it not that you can't start working on it before then but that if you try to learn a song and you can't do that um, then I'd say pause and try to learn the melody of that song now let's look at the actual tap and I'm going to teach you a basic version and a way with some rolls to get all of those melody notes that we just talked about First thing we're going to start with is potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and play through them, and I already have a lesson on how and why we play potatoes, but essentially we're just going to establish the timing and the tempo of the song. It sounds like this. Then we'll get into our first A part, and this is where everybody will come in because they know how fast we're going now. They know when to come in. And I want you to start with your middle finger on the third fret of the second string with your index finger beneath it on the second fret. And what we're doing with that middle finger is we're creating the same note that our first string is. So it's a way to get this note, but without having to play that open string, we can get it here and we'll work it into a forward roll. So it looks like this. We have a pitch. Then we'll go into a backwards roll for the rest of the melody. So can you hear the melody? It's there, isn't it? Again, the forward roll, measure seven. Okay, so again, listen for the melody. Now 
Now my version. A little bit of repeating, measure nine. Now what did the melody do here? It was like three blind mice, right? I'm gonna take a little bit of liberty in interpreting that, and we're gonna do a square roll, measure 11. And then I like to switch and grab it with my index finger so that I can grab the fourth fret down here with my ring. So the whole line measures nine through 12. Now we're going to repeat that A part, but we're not going to play it exactly the same. I wanted to give you another variation so that you could try some uh, new things. We're not going to do that backwards roll this time. We're going to keep it with a forward roll feel, and we're going to pinch some different notes. Measure 13. The same melody is happening, right? We're just using different rolls to get it. 15. Then a hammer on. Okay, that whole line. And then this line is very similar to what we've already done, but we're going to throw a slide in. And measure 19 is just a forward reverse roll, isn't it? It's a slide thrown in. That whole line. Now for the B part, remember our melody changes a little bit. We're going to go to an F chord. So how are we going to do that with some rolls incorporated? Check it out, measure 21. Forward reverse. And then we'll do another forward reverse, but this time we're over an F chord. Now you don't have to make the whole F chord here because we're actually not playing all the strings, but I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. If you don't know how to make an F chord, Ring finger on the third fret, middle finger on the second, index on the first, and then with our pinky, we'll come down and grab this third fret up here. And we'll do a forward reverse roll measure 24. Takes a little while to learn how to do that with our fret hand. Once you get it, you'll got it. You'll get it. You'll have it. <laughs> here go the whole line. line had some repeating and then remember the last couple measures are the same as the last two measures of the a part so we can use some ideas that we've already learned there the second b part we have a few more changes we're going to add a slide to start it this time just to hear what that sounds like just like our potatoes this time we're going to measure 31, get a slide going. And then when we get to the F chord and measure 32, we're not going to do a forward reverse roll. We're going to do a couple square rolls, kind of an alternating thumb roll. And this time I'm not playing in my pinky on the first string. I'm going to let that open first string ring out. It's going to sound great. And I'm going to start actually with just a two note F chord, the third fret here and the first fret here. And then I'll place my middle finger down for the second half of the measure. Whole line. Another slide. My finger's already on the third fret, so that's where I'll slide from, 33. beat of 36 we're going to start our ending now in real life you would probably hand it off to another instrument to take a solo but if you're the last solo before we end it this is what you would do we're going to slide into the ending measure 37 so we're going to slide from second fret up to the fifth fret pinch it again forward roll and 
I have a lesson teaching those basic endings, so go check that out if you would like some more variations or you'd like to know more about that. All right, let's play it all the way through now, very slowly. A measure of count in, then we'll come in together. One, two, ready, go. Thank you. 